stuff, I decided to do the same thing for states within the United States. Let's see if there's any correlations here. Again, looking at the three Bs of belief, behavior, and belonging, it's tricky, it depends on the study, but we got a lot of data. Particularly, uh, the new uh, Pew form uh, has a lot of data, uh, the ARIS uh, data, there's a lot out there. It seems as of the top 10 most religious, most God-fearing states in our wonderful nation appear to be Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Utah. The latter leading the nation in credit card pay for porn. <laughs> Utah, believe it or not. The bottom 10 or least religious states, and of course this, the 10 I'm going to read, uh, that does, in no way means they are secular states. They're still quite religious. They're just not nearly as religious as the other uh, 40 states. So they're like, the, they come with the lowest rates of church attendance, the lowest rates of God belief, the lowest rates. Still, a majority of people in those states are religious, but they have the highest percentages of secular people. And they are New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New York, Colorado, Oregon, Maine, and Alaska. Interesting. Now, of course, we always have to talk, and we know if we think about that list I gave of, of indicators of societal health, you can draw the correlations. And what we find, actually, is that on measures of poverty, educational attainment, civic engagement, domestic violence, obesity, trailer home occupancy, environmental protection, murder, if I already said it, etc., etc. The 10 most religious states generally have the highest rates of societal, what's the word, um, dysfunction. <laughs> and the most secular states tend to have the higher rates. Of course, it depends, and it's not as clear-cut as the international level. But still, there's a strong enough correlation to s soundly refute any pundit who would declare that our problems are, can be solved by religion, or that a lack of religion would create societal problems. The data just doesn't show that at all. Now, of course, is it causation or is it correlation? And we always have to be aware of that. Um, I would have a hard time proving that secularism or secularity automatically results in good, healthy, safe societies. I'm not so sure. I think a secular orientation to the world could have that effect. If enough people were interested in solving problems in the here and now, rather than waiting for the afterlife, if enough people were donating their time to hospitals rather than uh, uh, religious organizations. I mean, I could see some potential of having a secular-minded society. I saw that in Scandinavia. They're extremely uh, rational, reasonable. S scientific literacy is very strong. Same with Japan. But I'm not going to make that claim. I'm simply going to make the claim that a lack of religion doesn't seem to be a hindrance to a good society. It's a more humble claim, but it's one I'm more confident with the data that I possess to make. Um, and I'm not saying that strong religion itself is necessarily bad for society either, but it's clearly not a societal panacea. No way. In fact, if you look at the 75 or 100 most religious countries on earth, they are not places I want to take my next family vacation. Uh, and I certainly wouldn't want to uh, uh, live there if I was sick or young or old or a woman or gay or enjoyed, uh, I don't know, reading a free newspaper that uh, wasn't censored. And of course, we've got to acknowledge some, uh, 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 some difficult situations like the former Soviet Union, which was explicitly atheistic and even have a, had a government agency with the task of promoting atheism and stomping out religion. Ugly situation and an unfree society and an ugly society. Uh, we've got to talk about North Korea. What a nightmare. The only official religion is worship of the fascist dictator there. China also has its fair degree of repression of religion. And of course, the first country ever to be declared officially an atheist country. Does anybody know there was a country uh, that actually uh, had a, a you know, government takeover? Well, I don't know when he came to power, but it was in the 20th century, and they were the first country to de officially declare themselves atheistic as a nation. Albania, Albania under Enver Hoxha. I don't know how to pronounce the name, but 
what an awful man. What a, what a brutal dictator. As, as, uh, as, so he's out of power now, but he really, he just, I mean, he made it so it was illegal to name your child after any religious figure. It was illegal to have a Bible or a Quran. They bulldozed the churches and the mosques. It was real aggressive. And, and my answer to critics who, or Christians who like to put these countries in my face is I simply say, well, I would have to say that we have to talk about secularity that is more organic or secularity that's enforced on a captive population by the barrel of a gun and the bottom of a boot. And I would say, indeed, whenever secularity or religion is forced on a population with a gun, uh, it's an ugly situation. Uh, and yet, when we, so I'm most interested in societies where secularity has seemed to sort of emerge in relatively free processes, democratic processes, where there was no sanction uh, uh, for not being secular and so, or for being secular, et cetera, et cetera. So when we look at those, what we find, of course, is that the theosociological fallacy is just that, a fallacy and simply can't be supported. And I think Americans just desperately need to know this. I wish I could broadcast it every day, you know, on the radio, that religion is not, religion is good in helping out in certain areas of social problems, no doubt about it. I have a lot of friends, oh, let me take that back, I have a lot of acquaintances who talk about getting sober through religious avenues and so on and so forth. We know that religion uh, uh, has built schools and hospitals around the world. We know that the civil rights movement was extremely Christian through and through. So I don't want to disparage uh, saying that religiosity is not ever a, a, a an avenue for social betterment. It can be. But for those among us who would argue that religion is the answer for all our societal ills, the data is simply not there. And that's a pernicious declaration. And it needs to be fought. It needs to be countered. Uh, and it's simply untrue. Um, two other things, and I'll just say this really quickly, what my, I feel like my research also indicates. There are some people um, who continue to argue, and I don't know why, that religiosity is somehow an innate component of the human condition. That humans are somehow universally drawn to God. That we are all sort of innately uh, in need of faith, religious faith particularly. And I can talk about Dean Hammer who wrote The God Gene. The subtitle of The God Gene is How Faith is Hardwired into Our Genetics. Ooh, I can talk about Father Andrew Greeley. Stark and Bainbridge, uh, I won't bore you, Peter Berger, psychologist Justin Barrett has simply described atheism as unnatural. Um, Paul Froese ta has talked about the demand for religion as an essential aspect of the human condition that lie at the core of human understanding, and I could go on and on. Um, and these are not abstract philosophical claims, but they're actually sociological and anthropological and psychological claims about what it means to be a human being. And my research, I think, also challenges this notion. Um, we know that we have many societies where significant chunks of the population is secular. So some recent, a recent Harris poll, 2008, found that 19% of Americans are atheist or agnostic. That is the highest rate of non-belief I have ever seen and that has ever been reported. Usually it's somewhere between 5 and 12%, depending on, on how you measure it. But the latest Pew research and the Harris research found that 16% now of Americans choose none as their religious affiliation, a doubling in about 10 years. Just there, even if we just took that, we're talking roughly anywhere at the lowest 10 million and at the highest 50 million human beings in the United States that are relatively secular of one variety or another. And that's among the most religious Western industrialized country. If we look at places like Canada, between 19 and 23% do not believe in God. That's 8 million people right there. In Japan, about half of the Japanese don't believe in God. That's 63 million right there. Germany, about 30% don't believe in God. That's 25 million. The United Kingdom, 20% of the British said they didn't believe in God or a sort of spirit or life force. That's 12 million people baldly secular. In France, 33% do not believe in God or a universal spirit or cosmic force. That's 30 million people. So right there, just looking at Canada, the US, Japan, Germany, France, and Britain, that's about 150 million people that are non-believers in God, which would make it the 10th most populated country in the world. In fact, when I finished up that chapter for the Cambridge Companion uh, 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 to Atheism, I, I conservatively estimated that somewhere between 500 million and 750 million people in the world are non-believers in God of one variety or another. It's really difficult to call religion hardwired into our genetics with those kind of numbers. 
it's really difficult to sustain the notion that it's somehow natural. And so that's something I, I've tried to uh, I've tried to declare in my work. And finally, the third point, which I just came face to face with when I was living in Scandinavia and conducting my research, was some people would argue that we all desperately fear death, and this fear is all-consuming. And we all desperately need some type of meaning in our life beyond a recent football game. That we have to have some kind of grand, transcendental, spiritual meaning beyond the, our this worldly concerns. And that this is, again, part of the human condition. And I would argue that, yes, some of us, some of the time, are very afraid to die. No question about it. And yes, many of us, Many of uh, at certain times wonder what it's all about and what the meaning of life is. And I don't, so I don't discount those as very significant factors in the human condition. But I found most Scandinavians, and if I stopped and thought about it, most of my relatives <laughs> uh, do not obsess about death, have, have a very benign, uh, not benign, what can I say, um, sublime acceptance of, the, of their own mortality and understand that we have this time, we must make the best of it, and then we will pass on like everything that ever lives. And they seem to function okay with that knowledge. And that uh, they don't need deep meaning beyond what they make for themselves with, through the relationships they have, the work that they do, and the recreation or art that they take care of. And so I feel like that also needs to be asserted because most religious people will talk about religiosity as though it's it's innate, it's an instinct, it's, we're wired for God, and we all are terrified of death, and we all need meaning, and voila, religion addresses all of these three issues, and, uh, and I think that that's simply untrue, that many people live uh, fulfilling lives without any type of uh, faith in God or uh, overriding, uh, uh, paralyzing fear of death. Um, so those, that, I, that's why I just kind of wanted to stop there and give you, scratching the surface of what it is I'm trying to do in my work lately, and then I thought we could talk openly and have some Q&A. So I saw the first hand there, and I've been asked to repeat the questions, so please know that um, it's not just a obsessive compulsive disorder. Yes? I'm curious why Texas didn't score even categories of Okay, uh, the question was why Texas didn't score in either category of states. Well, Texas certainly isn't going to be among the least religious states. It doesn't even come close. But Texas certainly comes close in terms of most religious. I'm certain it's in the top 15. But I just, I wanted to, top 10 just was kind of a neat cutoff. But Texas is definitely up there. And again, it depends on how you measure it. Um, are you measuring, so for example, um, what I did for these top 10 was I picked strength of belief in God. So not only do you believe in God, but how, how convinced are you that God exists? Okay, and then I also picked how often do you attend church? So there may be other measures of religiosity where Texans are, are higher, but for this particular listing, those were the two I, I went for. Yes, sir? How does the United States place among other countries? Mm -hmm. The question was, how does the United States place among other countries in terms of its religiosity or secularity? <laughs> That's a very good question, and I have all that data. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I didn't think of that one. Uh, so I, I can't give you the hard facts. I don't have it memorized, unfortunately, but I can tell you this. When compared to similar countries, uh, and by similar I mean other industrialized democracies with large populations, we are most likely the most religious nation. And the only two that possibly come close are Ireland and Poland. And I say possibly because Ireland is four million people, and even there we're seeing significant signs of secularization. Poland, it's a little bit hard to compare the United States with Poland in terms of demographics, history, economics. But if we compare ourselves to any other Western or non-Western industrialized democracy, the United States is easily the most religious. And we're the most religious in, a, in many measures. Uh, so frequency of prayer, uh, belief in the Bible as the 